Uh, so what I want to talk about today is what CodeDX Trans solves, what the big problem is. Uh, and what we've seen over the last several years is 90% of the breaches that come into applications or come into environments are due to application vulnerabilities in, in most cases. Um, oftentimes, it may come from um, users, but essentially, we, we see a lot of clients dumping a lot of money or spending a lot of money, you know, $3.4 billion to fix the problem, right? Um, and so this is where we want to try and help. You know, we often see the AppSec team is really restricted in the number of the personnel that they have to work with, right? You know, we have seen one AppSec engineer for every you know, 75 developers, right? And so this is a real world scenario. You know, I'm, I'll post a poll right now. You know, what do you, in your organization, like, what do you see from an AppSec member to your developers, right? We see one to 10, one to 20. Um, some clients, it's just one person, they are the AppSec team, right? And so it just depends on, on the, each company, each organization itself. So how does that really play out as we go forward? Um, and how do we address that, right? It's, it's a very manual process but oftentimes. Um, even more so because of the breadth of what has to be attacked and has to be managed, we see a lot of clients that have all our different tools that run running multiple tools from SAS, DAS, et cetera. And each one of these tools, they don't really integrate with each other, right? They are usually all siloed data sets. If somebody has to interact with them, they have to go to different tools themselves. Um, and this is a real challenge for their organization. Um, you know, oftentimes they're going log into each individual tool set, looking at results, trying to figure out what correlates with what, right? And from there, once they've gotten all the results pulled down, then they have to really centralize that data. And oftentimes they have to put that in something like a spreadsheet like Excel, right? This is a very common scenario we see with clients. Um, it doesn't happen to everyone, but we, it's very painstaking. Once they've got those all in one data set, then they have to figure out, well, how, what if this is needs to be acted on, right? What if this is real? How much of this is just noise or just low level vulnerabilities that will never get causing any serious, serious issues? So I can't have them fix everything, but let's, what are the critical ones to send? What's false positive, right? And then those can take 10 minutes per finding, right? What would, so what does it really look like? And that's a, a big question, right? Does anything seem familiar to, to anybody on the on the call right now? Like this is something that you guys see on a very common basis, or is this something you guys don't really see? Um, so it's, it's a question, right? We kind of see that. So that being said, and so what do we do, right? How do we address this problem? Um, you know, once they figure out what they have to work on, they have to then get into JIRA. I forgot that part, right? So yeah, and all this takes time, right? So how do we address it? What is the real way to get around it. So what we try and do here with CodeDX is try and offer a solution for all those types of scenarios and problems. Um, the first thing is we look at automation as being the key to successfully enabling DevSecOps, right? And eliminating the time-consuming manual tasks that occur. So the point is we want to go from something like this, which is very much all over the place, to something much more streamlined and efficient and having the AppSec team, instead of having to go to every single individual tool, they can go to one interface in CodeDX, and all those tools can pump their data into CodeDX, but we will do all this manual labor. So, so what are we doing there? What, are, what is CodeDX acting in? What are we trying to perform? So the first thing is correlation, right? We want to take the data coming from all these different 10, 20, 15 different tools you may be using. Maybe you're only using five or six, but either way, they can pump on a lot of data if you have 100 or 200. 200 applications or 1,000 applications, there's a lot of data that's going to be coming out. So we'll do all that correlation for you. We have ways to overlap, deduplicate, merge, and look at the data and see where it best fits. And you can even customize how that correlation occurs. Uh, from there, we can provide that unified risk visibility of that application and that vulnerability. Um, and then we get to saying, OK, well, we have that data. How do we triage it? How do we see what's actually false positive? Well, we have a, a a machine learning algorithm using the triage assistant, and then we can actually look at the data that's been uh, marked false positive in the past, and we can judge based on that prior data what from the new data is actually false positive, and what is real, what is not real, uh, what needs to be escalated. Uh, and from that point, we can then say, all right, 
go ahead and escalate it. And then we can track that vulnerability in code DX. We can track that, that ticket. We can see if it's open, it's been closed. If they close it, we can close it in code DX automatically. If they, if you send a new scan and we find that you don't see the vulnerability anymore, the next scan, but they never close the ticket in Jira or your whatever ALM you're using, then we can update it as well. We can go ahead and close the ticket on that side. So we have this constant flow of data. In terms of that scenario, once we have to do a new scan, well, how do we do that? We have an orchestration capability within Code DX. So we can actually kick off the scanners from within Code DX. We can tell check marks to go run, or we could tell Zap or Burp Enterprise or whatever you want to use, whatever tool you've customized around that, we can actually kick off those scans from directly within Code DX. Um, so that's the goal. So once we've done all that, right, what other leverage and whatever tools can we use with Code DX to help streamline our process? Um, so then we're taking a look at, well, once we have all those pieces in there, we can now use a lot more automation from plugins that we have with Jenkins and other CI tools. So be able to kick off the scans, be able to correlate the data, bring in the results, get that feedback and be a quality gate for your CI CD pipeline. So the, the developers directly within their pipelines, once they're building out their applications, they get a final result or a grade per se from Code DX and say, hey, you have five new critical vulnerabilities, so let's fail the build or mark the build as unstable. Um, developers can quickly and easily use their IDEs to connect in the Code DX and bring the vulnerabilities directly into their own uh, application and their IDE as they're actually developing the code. Right? So instead of them having to go into Code DX to see what the vulnerabilities are, they can actually just pull it in and say, as they're looking at code, say, hey, there's a vulnerability right here. Well, what is this about? And they can look at it and see what the information might be. And then decide if they can fix it right away and, and eliminate one more vulnerability from the report that's coming in from the tools. And so all, all these capabilities happen there. As you're performing all these different triaging activities and development activities and the correlation data, um, you're building a system of record within Code DX. Right? So this can now become a place you can go to at any point, look at your AppSec development and look at the applications and see, over time, how am I progressing my vulnerabilities? Am I increasing, am I decreasing vulnerabilities? How often am I scamming my vulnerabilities? What's the mean time for remediation for these vulnerabilities for my criticals, for my highs, my mediums? Um, these are all now features you'll be able to take advantage of uh, and use as a system of record. Go look in that, what version two looked like, version four looked like, uh, what did it look like you know, three months ago? Uh, and I can see that quickly in a code DX. So this is the, the leverage you're able to get. And at that point, be able to take advantage of the DevSecOps and use code DX to really highlight um, how security can be integrated in that DevOps pipeline uh, from the testing, from the build, from the code development, uh, even from planning to release. So these are all different AppSec or areas that we can look at. Uh, so I'm gonna jump in to code DX uh, into the live environment real quick. So you just take a look at what's in there and how things kind of operate. Um, and then we'll come back and ask any questions that we may have. So give me one second while I pull my environment up. Yeah. Trying to get some screens out of the way here. Okay. All right, so this is Code DX. A couple architectural notes about Code DX. Uh, this is an on-prem solution. Everything we look at in the UI right now is driven completely by an API backend. So you can always go into, uh, whatever you see in here, you can always go into your own applications, integrations, and build custom development around Code DX and not have to worry about this specific uh, interface. But this is the interface we have. Uh, when we come into Code DX, you're able to look at your applications, you're able to create some nestings of the applications, you're able to keep, create projects. Each of these projects is really uh, a container for whatever you want. So if you want to create a development team um, one, right, and create a project for that, that could be your own development team. And then you can create a new project that they're in charge of specific applications. So maybe application one, and we can create a project for that. And then we're able to do within Code DX is take these specific applications and we can nest them onto different teams. This will give the ability to actually create roll-up type of reporting within Code DX directly. So now I can look at 
all the findings, uh, information, and pipeline that happens at the development team for all new child projects. So as an example, we have enterprise here. Um, I could look at the dashboard for Enterprise uh, Incorporated, which includes all the child projects for all the projects beneath it, right? So, and I can also turn that off and look specifically at what this, this particular application looks like. So we have ways to view that information directly within Codex and be able to create that hierarchy of applications, of development teams, of projects, of applications, uh, microservices, however you want to utilize the project, it's really up to you. Now, uh, once we have a project in CodeDX, then we can start performing analysis. And so real quick to show you, we can create an analysis here and I can grab um, all these different findings here. I can open up this Zap application or Zap scan, for example, um, and I can add in another result for WebInspec. For example, I can just different types of results for from different scanners. Um, I can also tie this application to, and I meant to do that beforehand. Let me go back to the application. I'm going to tie this to a repo. So within here, I can actually create a link to a repository. I'll grab this one here. And when I cl clone that specific repository information down into CodeDX, I can create a new analysis. And what we do is we can actually pull that source code directly from the repo and analyze that information using some of our bundle tools or using your own custom tools. So here we have some bundle tools built into CodeDX, but you can also add in your own custom uh, third-party tools as the orchestration piece mentioned before. So orchestrating those scans and then also add in your own scan results from the other tools as well. So all capabilities within CodeDX, um, I can upload pretty much anything I want into the system. So let me cancel and just hit begin analysis. And so what that happened, what happens here is it goes in the background and starts running the scans for those specific tools. Now I've already run some other scans in another application. So just to show you what a much broader result looks like, um, I'm gonna open up the WebGoat application here. And in WebGoat here, we have, I think about 20 or 30 different inputs that have been brought into this particular application. So if I click show inputs here, you'll see there are a, a wide range, about 20 different types of results from Fortify, WebInspec, Dependency Check, Check Styles, AppScan, um, a huge number of lists of tools here. Um, and what we've seen overall is from all these different results, we have a total of 26,000 different results. We've correlated and deduplicated uh, that data down to 18,000, right? So nearly a 30% reduction in the total number of findings uh, that have been brought in by our correlation engine, right? And this is completely customizable. Again, you can correlate as much data or as little data as you want. So if I take just this one finding here, uh, this is where, you know, three different tools have found it, but the tools have reported eight different scenarios of it, right? Just in different ways that it's reported the specific finding. So that correlation can happen across multiple tools, but as you can see, it can happen across a single tool, right? So Checkmark itself reported the same thing multiple times and it's just different ways and way it looked at it. And so this is a capability that you can see be able to uh, easily deduplicate the amount of data that comes in and reduce the amount of noise. And at that point, you can then have uh, take advantage of all the different filters that exist, all the different rule types that exist for each one of these tools. So based on whatever data they provide. So if you want to look, drill down on a specific tool type or maybe a specific vulnerability type, or maybe look at the severity and just drill down to, well, show me the most that I have for any type of specific severity. I see a lot of highs here. There isn't so many criticals, but definitely a lot of highs, right? So I can focus on that. Uh, drill on, on specific standards. So we have ways to view data based on uh, standards from ASVS version four, uh, CWE standards, this is DIG, or maybe OWASP top 10, right? Different ways to, again, address the, uh, the data. And then from there, pick one of these findings, and then we can push it across to Jira, right? We have integrations within your ticketing, your application lifecycle management tools like Jira or Azure DevOps or, a uh, couple of other ones, ServiceNow. So once that ticket's been created, we can then track the status of that ticket, close it, open or remediate it, 
uh, and then see that whole life cycle progress. So again, what a ways to view in the data directly in code DX, we can manage it. We have ways to deduplicate the data and then attack it and then track it. Triage assistant, as I mentioned before, be able to can see the predicted status. We can see this is probably false positive with a 23.7% confidence rating. Um, this is for 99.99% based and we, in this case it has already been escalated. So again, we can tell from previously triage data what should be or what might be false positive and what might need to be escalated. So this is just a kind of a high level view of what we're trying to accomplish within CodeDX is being able to centralize that data, um, be able to take action on that data when it comes to creating tickets and then automate that process. So within the actual application itself for any of these applications, actually, let me go back over here to WebCode. We have ways to automate from within the issue tracker configuration to automate that ticket creation. And of course, I mentioned before, we have uh, plugins you can utilize for Jira, uh, or rather for Jenkins to kick off the analysis of the different results or pull the results in and see that. So this is, in this particular case, we're looking at a ALM integration to automate the ticket creation from new vulnerabilities to security vulnerability. Uh, I assign it from different people creating filters on which rules you actually want to create these automation tickets on, or maybe look for specific tools or decide, you know, only do it if it's overlapping with more than one tool, right? Maybe three or four tools have to overlap before we automatically create that ticket. So there's often a case where clients don't want to automate the ticket creation because they're concerned they'll create a bunch of noise. You can reduce that noise by fine tuning what and when those tickets are automatically generated. So that's another feature that exists. Um, I want to make this really short. This is just really a high level view of what we're trying to offer within CodeDX. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at this information here or on our website. Thank you very much. Have a good day.